I recently got a comment from a new viewer who wanted to know just how I got started with this hobby. They also wanted the answer in video format, which I have no problems doing. Now, I might have covered some of this topic in parts of other videos, but this will answer most of all the questions in one place, that way you don't have to look for them. Now, everyone has a reason for the decisions they make, but my reasoning is very different, and to be honest, I wish I would have done this a long time ago, but there are a few things I would change though. In today's video, we look at this Cub Cadet branded lawnmower and the problem is that it was given away for free because the owner thought there was a starting issue with it and in the end, well, they weren't wrong. Now, I've already fixed this mower and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video and I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about how I got started doing this hobby and I wish it was as simple as picking a course at tech school, but apparently I decided to take the long way around. Now the first time I heard about this hobby was when I was working in the office doing CAD work when a coworker mentioned they had started working on small engines. I sat there in my cubicle trying to figure out what in the world they were talking about. But after more explanation, it all made sense afterwards. At the time, I just didn't realize they had a name for it. Unfortunately, they didn't tell me much more about it because they soon passed away, but that was the first time I heard about it, and at the time, I had no interest in finding out more about it. It would be almost 15 years later before things started to finally come together and what I mean by that is that I started to realize just how interesting and satisfying this hobby could be. So does that mean anyone could enjoy this hobby then? That's a hard question to answer. So anyone can do this hobby, whether you're just trying to fix your mower, blower, or trimmer, but as for enjoying it, well, each experience can be different and some are great while others can be devastatingly bad. As for my experience, it's been a mixed bag. For those of you who don't know, I used to be a fan of street racing, so for almost 10 years I dedicated my weekends and some of my evenings to working on cars. But at some point I had to grow up and eventually I stopped worrying about going fast and started worrying about work and life in general, pretty boring stuff if I have to admit it. I eventually moved into my first home and that's when I realized I was not prepared to have a yard and that's when I knew I needed to get some yard tools, but you'll never guess what I ended up getting. So my first yard tools all had extension cords. Yep, I was that guy. I only had one extension cord, so mowing the front yard was a bit difficult, but eventually after three long years, I realized I wanted to have more power and especially more mobility, and having a 100 foot extension cord wasn't gonna cut it, pun intended. There was just one problem. I did not want to go out and buy new stuff, and for those of you who've seen my videos will know that I am a complete penny pincher, so going out to buy a $300 mower was out of the question. So I started to browse the used lawn and garden section online trying to find a good deal, but the strangest part was that the first gasoline item I was able to get was a free Craftsman leaf blower. There was just one issue, it was broken and needed some repairs done to it. Luckily the fix wasn't terrible and even though I didn't repair it the way it should have been, it worked and I enjoyed it for a year or two before getting rid of it. The best part was that I was able to get it back two years later, so I still have it and I intend on fixing it again later this season. So my start in this hobby was mainly out of being cheap and it also did one other thing for me which was to satisfy my need to work on something with an engine again. Now I really wanted to get back to working on my race car again, but to be honest, the cost of upgrading the fuel system and all other supporting mods made the idea of working on it very off-putting. But when working on small engines, you don't typically have to spend a lot of money to get the same sort of satisfaction. So here's a scenario for you. You find a mower on the side of the road. You take it home and try to start it, but it won't start. You then watch a couple of videos on how to figure out what's wrong with it, and you end up replacing the carb and also doing a small tune-up on it. And by the end of the project, you've spent about $40 and now have a working lawnmower to either use, sell, or maybe even start a side business. But sometimes things don't always go according to plan. Say you don't want to or can't spend $40, what then? What sometimes happens is out of desperation, you have to get crafty and you cut corners or find substitutes. Some work while others simply don't do anything. This is the part of my experience that I regret the most. Some of you have seen this in my most recent videos, and for the most part, I'm happy with the results. Otherwise, I will typically go back and change what I did wrong with a better option. I put it that way because more than likely, I'm still not going to fix it the way it should have been done. So it all started with the Craftsman blower, and to be honest, after that, it's all sort of a blur of finding free items and getting stuff from coworkers to fix. 
I was really enjoying it and all was going great until it wasn't. I'm not going to mention the specifics, but let's say my plans changed for me and this is when you learn to adapt to the situation or just pack up, grab a drink and a cigar and give up. But since I don't drink and I'm a recovering secondhand smoker, I just kept plowing along and things got a lot better. Now working a full time job and doing this hobby keeps my free time schedule pretty much booked up so I have to be very selective when it comes to making plans but if you want something that offers this much satisfaction for such a small investment you can't beat it at least within the law. So basically a change in scenery and a perpetual cheapness got me to where I am now but what about my comment about other people doing this kind of work. Now this is going to be difficult for me to say so I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible so bear with me. These machines are at their core not very complicated. Now the supporting systems like the carb or the valve train can be tough to understand, but in essence there are nothing more than a self-contained firework that works automatically. All you have to do is understand where the air goes, how fuel is introduced, and when the fuel mixture is ignited. I do apologize for my terminology, but I'm trying to keep from using a few keywords, otherwise I could run into a few headaches. Once you understand how all these systems work and how the separate systems work with each other, then understanding where an issue can pop up at will make your job of repairing them a lot easier. There's just one small issue. If you have a tough time understanding the relationship between these systems as a whole, then repairing it might become a replacement parts festival and things can get very expensive very quickly. It doesn't take any critical thinking, just a basic understanding and some logic, but anyone can figure it out. I'm not the smartest or the brightest person in the world, so if I can figure it out, I know you can too. That does bring up another issue that I've seen more times than I can count. I'll pick up a free item after seeing an online ad and they'll mention all the parts they replaced. But once I get the machine home, it turns out they just loaded up the parts cannon and fired it, hoping that one of the items they replaced will be the one that'll get it working again. Now if this was a car, that would have been a very expensive thing to do, but for a small engine, it's doable. The issue is that it's wasteful, especially if you replace something that didn't need to be replaced. After looking at the machine and diagnosing it, come to find out the issue was something else, and yet they ordered a lot of parts that would only be needed if the machine was working again. Nothing wrong with wishful thinking, but wishful spending is a tough lesson to learn. Come to find out they didn't understand what was going on and simply did what they knew how to do which is to replace this part and that part and just hope that was going to work. Now I don't blame them for doing what they know how to do. It took me a long time to understand what was going on in a small engine but having worked on cars before that really helped out. I only wish I would have seen some good videos decades ago to help me out. It would have made understanding what was going on a little bit easier to handle. So do I recommend this sort of hobby then? Yes I would, but only if you have a minor interest in it. If you find this work baffling or even lowbrow, then just walk away. But if you want to save a fair amount of money, then give it a shot. Of course, I would have someone who you can trust to help you along the way, just in case you find yourself in a bad place, which is bound to happen even to me. There's also nothing wrong with sending messages to someone like me or another creator. You never know, we might be able to help you out. I just now mentioned it, but the money I've saved from not taking my equipment to the shop, I can't even begin to guess the amount. Now I'm not talking about all the equipment I've fixed and gotten rid of, I'm talking about my personal equipment. I've had to fix a couple of Honda mowers, trimmers, blowers, my leaf vacuum, riding mower, and a massive walk behind blower. The money I've saved must be in the thousands of dollars. So has working on my own small engines been worth it? I would think so. I know I wasn't being very specific about all the items I've worked on and that's because there must be hundreds of them since my first Craftsman Blower but you can go to either of my two channels and look through all the videos and see a good portion of them. The worst part was that there's at least 4 years of stuff that I didn't film that's not documented and those were the years where I learned the most about this hobby so I wish I could have had them documented as well but I guess I should be happy with everything I have up so far. Now I've had a couple of terrible experiences with small engines but they're on a very personal level that I really don't want to share on here but the bigger question is would I change them and the answer is a surprising no. The reason is because those experiences have all helped to get me to where I am right now so if I change those experiences they might have made things a lot easier to handle but who knows where I might be because of the changes. 
Now, if you tried and felt as though you've given up sooner than you should have on a project for some reason, then I'd ask you to try it again, except this time reach out to someone and maybe with their help you'll be able to get it working again, and if not, at least you didn't give up on it. So my question is, what's your experience been like with small engines so far? Has it been a good one, or was it the worst thing that's ever happened to you? And if it was bad, what would you change about it? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.